join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We're to the approval of the agenda. Is there any, are there any amendments uh, or uh, additions or subtractions to the agenda this evening? Yes, Mr. Cacciardi? I'd move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay. Motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion of the agenda this evening? All in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. We are to our first citizen comment period. Does anyone wish to address the council? Yes, sir, go ahead. If you could just identify yourself. With this on, because I'm lacking the four other people that would make this a little more compelling request. However, as a private citizen and as a parent of a 16-year-old or going on 16-year-old student at South Kitsap High School, I would like to respectfully uh, request that you move the uh, making or manufacture or installation, whatever jargon you use, of a sidewalk from at least the Catholic Church to the high school. I travel this road twice a day. It's absolutely the most dangerous uh, segment of road that we have as far as the high school goes. I don't want to belabor you with uh, the necessity, but I can tell you that I've spoken to some of the bus drivers under uh, Jay's tutelage and they are in despair of the kids with the black clothes, skateboarding, earbuds, and so on and so on. Uh, don't mean to stray from the topic, but the topic, as far as I'm concerned as a parent, is it must be head, uh, you must move this to the head of the line. It, just at a minimum, we need the sidewalk. Backing up a little bit, I just found out as a board member that we <laughs> are now lacking a swimming pool so I'd enjoin you to uh, put your thinking caps on and try to figure out a way we can keep that going. Uh, state will match our funds 50%. So if there's any uh, money in the coffers or anything we could do to keep the community alive, and I'm speaking now as a community member, not as a board member, uh, the other half is our problem, of course, I would enjoin you to do that as well. That's all I have. Thank you for listening. It's nice to meet you all. Thank you for your comments. Others wishing to comment? Yes, Jerry. Hello, Jerry Harmon. Um, one of the things that I notice is you're putting people on your, your appointments to the boards and the commissions, and you keep talking about wanting to be transparent. But I have never heard you even mention here so that people that watch these proceedings that you would be doing that say a month or a month and a half ago, so that people could apply. So that I think most people in Port Orchard had no idea that this was coming up. So I think it's just something that should be part of a meeting each year, that at least it's announced so that the TV or the internet could at least get it out to the public because a lot of us don't get the paper. And when it's not even mentioned here that it's going to happen, um, most of us don't know about it, so thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Others wishing to comment this evening? Okay, we have another citizen comment period at the end of the meeting. So we are on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? <coughs> yes, Mr. Yeah, Keener. Second. Okay, second by Council Member Lucarelli. Any discussion of the two items on the consent agenda? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of the con approving the consent agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the consent agenda is approved. We have a uh, presentation tonight. We have Brianna Murray here in the audience from Gordon Thomas Honeywell, our legislative, uh, our, our, uh, our lobbyist this evening, so <laughs> tongue-tied. 
Good evening. Um, thank you for having me, and I will uh, also pass along that uh, Chelsea Hager had a conflict this evening, but she would have liked to be here as well. Um, as I think you all know, her and I are working on your issues in partnership um, and advocating on your behalf as a team. Um, what I'm hoping to do this evening is to provide you all with a legislative update on what we expect to happen in the 2018 session, briefly go over your legislative priorities and the work we've done on those priorities to set you up for success in 2018 and onward. Um, and then my hope is that you all will uh, adopt the agenda, uh, the legislative agenda that is on your, your um, up for your consideration later this evening. Um, so with that as my plan, I will dive right in um, with what we're expecting to happen during the 2018 legislative session. Um, I think you all have probably already seen some of this in the press, but um, I'm going to start from square one. Um, so in November, um, we did have a change in the Senate. Um, in the 45th district Senate seat was won by a Democrat, which changed the majority in the Senate from being majority Republican to majority Democrat. Um, for the first time since 2013, that means that the House, the Senate, and the Governor's Office are all controlled uh, by Democrats. This means that there is this political shift occurring in Olympia. Um, some policy items that previously didn't get hearings in the Senate or didn't pass through the Senate may be considered. Um, similarly, other items that were making progress under the Republican-controlled Senate um, may not be advancing. Uh, additionally, we've seen new committee chairs uh, appointed in the Senate, as well as new ranking members. Uh, you all should have received those notifications and information about those changes from us via email. Um, this is the second year of the two-year legislative cycle, uh, which means that it is a short session. It's scheduled to last only 60 days. The purpose of short sessions is for the legislature to come in and finish the work they didn't complete in the long session make amendments to budgets that were adopted last year, uh, and um, once again, they'll consider uh, about 2,000 different policy bills. The, uh, the main item that they left unfinished from last year is a capital budget uh, and the legislation addressing the Hearst Supreme Court decision. The uh, governor's office released on Friday a new version of the Hearst proposal. That bill was heard today in the House Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee. The draft is not perfect. There is still disagreement around it, but we're encouraged that conversations around the Hearst uh, um, legislative proposals are um, now in the public. They are uh, being discussed and they're moving toward, uh, hopefully, an agreement. The hope is that in the first few weeks of session, there will be a, a coming together on the Hearst legislation and um, that, will, that will also lead to the passage of the capital budget. The capital budget that they would likely pass will reflect the negotiated version that was released in July. They're not, um, as I understand it, committee budget leader or capital budget leadership have made commitments to one another to uh, not make significant changes to the project list that was funded during that session or during that, in that proposal. Uh, in addition to capital budget and Hearst being top of the list, the other item that occurred over the last month was that the Supreme Court ruled that the McCleary investments that the legislature made last year uh, still did not meet the uh, obligations of the court order, not because they weren't a good financing proposal, but because they weren't happening soon enough. Uh, the call in the court order was for the uh, legislature to fully fund K through 12 education by 2018. The proposal that was put forward wouldn't accomplish that until 2019. Uh, so the court has said, legislature, you should come up with $1.1 billion in order to close that funding gap in the immediate 2018 session. So in the operating budget, the legislature is going to be looking for how to close that funding back or respond to the court and indicate that they don't believe that it's necessary to allocate that $1.1 billion. Um, so um, in addition to those main items, the uh, all the legislation that was introduced last session is automatically reintroduced this session. We also anticipate uh, hundreds and thousands of more bills to be introduced. Every year there's about 2,500 bills introduced in each chamber. Uh, we've already been seeing those bills being pre-filed. 
Um, and the uh, governor's office is beginning to look at his role in this process and will be releasing his proposed budgets uh, in by the end of the week. So at the end of the week here, you'll get a report from Chelsea and I that outlines and highlights some of the bills that have been pre-filed as well as uh, reviews the governor's proposed budgets. And again, there'll be supplemental budgets, so we'll be looking at making amendments to those budgets that were adopted last year. Um, I'd like to turn your attention to your legislative priorities, but before I do so, are there any questions about very broadly what we expect to have happen in 2018? So, uh, Brianna, the Hearst, the movement on the Hearst, and that's really the, the, the roadblock I understand in the capital budget, which is impacting uh, potentially this, our park, pocket park funds and, the, and of course our uh, well, the loan for our well, the construction of our well. Uh, do you, is, is that part of that solution? Do you believe that what, what, what the governor's brought forward in this Hearst decision? Correct, so the capital budget requires 60% approval from each chamber, mm -hmm. which means that even with the shift, the political shift that occurred in the Senate, mm -hmm. the Democrats do not have enough votes to pass out the capital budget without bipartisan support, gotcha. which means there is still this leverage point of there needs to be an agreement on Hearst before there are adequate number of votes to pass a capital budget. Throughout the interim, a small group of legislators have been meeting on Hearst and trying to get to that agreement. We saw the first public document reflecting those negotiations on Friday, released by the governor's office. That proposal was heard earlier today. It's not perfect, they still have more negotiating to do, but it's really encouraging that they release something publicly, that there is a public dialogue happening, and it, it reflects a movement toward compromise and toward agreement. So I'm encouraged, glass half full type of gal here, but I'm encouraged that in the first few weeks of session, they will reach that agreement on Hearst and do a capital budget. And if they pass the capital budget, it's gonna look substantially similar to what they've already agreed to in that July 20th version of the capital budget. So before we get into our priorities, does anybody else have questions for Brianna, just Mr. Clausen? You said the capital budget is gonna be substantially as presented or left last year. Is there gonna be any opportunity to tweak or add to? Great question. So as I understand it, there is a handshake agreement amongst capital budget leadership that they are not going to revisit the project list that was negotiated on July 20th, that they're gonna pass it as is. What then becomes the conversation for the remainder of session, assuming they take action on the capital budget early, is will or will they not to do a supplemental capital budget either amending that list <clears throat> or allocating additional funds that have become available since they adjourned last session. So that will be part of the discussion is, will there be a supplemental capital budget? If there is, is it just making technical changes or is it actually allocating more funds? I think it's pretty clear based on revenue forecast that there is not going to be a ton of money available even if they choose to do a supplemental capital budget but there may be some and the other thing kind of playing into that conversation is that oftentimes allocations and appropriations made in the capital budget particularly supplemental capital budgets in short sessions on even years are take-home wins for legislators that are then up for re-election in November of 2018. So in November of 2018, half the Senate and the entire House, as well as anyone who retires or, or cycles through and, and decides they don't wanna run again, will be up. So right now you have very narrow majorities in both chambers. In November of 2018, we could see everything shift again. Thank you. Other questions? dive into our priorities. Okay, so um, you all should have your legislative priorities in front of you for your consideration this evening. Um, my hope is to just briefly review them. They should not be new to you at all and give you an update of what Chelsea and I have been doing to set you up for a successful 2018 session. Um, the first one is the Rockwell Pocket Park. As the mayor alluded to, this is 300,000 for this project is included in the 
latest negotiated version of the capital budget on July 20th. So if a capital budget passes, this item will, the 300,000 will be uh, allocated to the city. Um, the total cost for um, both pocket parks that are envisioned is 1.2 million. So we have talked about a subsequent request beyond the 300,000. Um, but at this point, we're very focused on getting that initial 300,000 across the finish line. We'll look at additional funding either mid or late to session, depending on how that supplemental budget conversation goes, or most likely in 2019. Moving on to the next item, which is state investment in state routes. This is an item we have been working on in collaboration with the Association of Washington Cities uh, and is a long-term item. The policy discussion here is that you all have some state routes running through your jurisdiction that are in need of improvement, um, Sedgwick and State Route 16 specifically. And in order to compel the state to invest funding into improving these corridors, and we, we believe there needs to be a more robust discussion between the city and the state about who's responsible for, for, for identifying that revenue, who should be the lead on those projects, uh, and what that should look like. Uh, there are a number of different conversations happening now in the arena of transportation now that the legislature has adopted the Connecting Washington package in the form of a gas tax. That's likely the last large revenue that we'll see increased for a number of years. So legislators are turning their attention to what's gonna be the next revenue source to fund transportation. This study is gonna look at what are cities' transportation <coughs> needs and what are the mechanisms available to cities generally to meet those transportation needs. Uh, and the idea is that we would secure budget proviso or bill language that would direct the Joint Transportation Committee or another body to conduct this study. The study would take two years. They would come back in the 2020, for the 2021, 2023 biennium and be looking at different funding mechanisms and tools. So this is a, the short term ask is to do a study and then long term really looking out into the future about what type of options are available. Just for clarification, for clarification, that's a study on funding sources. And the relationship between the city and the state on improving state routes. Uh, the state has not made adequate investments in many state routes throughout the, throughout the entire state because they're located in cities and the need for the improvement Cr comes from the, the growth that's occurring within the city. So the city recognizes, oh, there's a need to improve Sedgwick, but the state maybe doesn't put the same priority on it. So then who pays for that? And where does that money come from? Okay, so, and perhaps we need the conversation offline. Um, because there've already been many funding studies, not like, not directly who's responsible for the roads, the state highways that are within um, different, well, they're all within a different jurisdiction, either a county jurisdiction or a state jurisdiction. And I know this is a, a statewide issue, but sometimes I get tired of studies. <laughs> and um, right now the, um, isn't it the Transportation Commission is doing the pilot project on a vehicle, uh, miles driven, uh, miles traveled. So we're, we're working on that. And I just sat on a six month or it was almost a year committee at PSRC on future funding for transportation. You know, when are we ever going to get to a solution or a remedy? I, I don't know. I, I get tired of hearing that we're going to fund another study and it's going to take another two years. Thank you very much. I understand the frustration. I would also implore upon you that in the legislative process, incremental steps is what eventually gets you across the finish line. And I think we've seen that on a number of the different legislative objectives we've worked on together. Right. And I know that it's frustrating, but it is the nature of the process we're working within. And DOT has recently done, 
Oh, John, what did they call it where they went through and looked at all of the state the corridors? The corridor studies. And they did mm -hmm. phase one, and now they're doing phase mm -hmm. two. So they should be very familiar with all of the needs for their state highways. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm happy to discuss more offline. Um, mm. the, the next item on your legislative priorities is the West Sound Alliance. Um, and as you all know, uh, Chelsea and I have been representing you within the West Sound Alliance discussion. Um, that group is meeting on uh, Friday, I believe, Councilmember Ashby, that you will be attending. Uh, and um, because the, at this stage, the investments that have been made in the region are being implemented and there isn't an immediate funding opportunity in the, 20, uh, in the, in the 2018 session, um, we're uh, joining other lobbyists in the group in kind of recommending that uh, we, we take a, a, a bit of a breather um, and come back in preparation for the 2019 session and reevaluate transportation needs regionally at that time. Um, but in, in the meantime, we'd continue to support the alliance and uh, would reevaluate that group after this upcoming legislative session. The last item on your legislative priorities is to align the GMA comprehensive plan update. Um, Kitsap County is advancing a bill that allows all counties to update their comprehensive plans every 10 years beginning in 2025. Um, we have already expressed the city's support for that proposal. Um, we expect Kitsap County will take the lead in terms of managing the advocacy workload, um, but that the city is in support of that proposal. In addition to those specific legislative priorities, um, we are also engaged in the Association of Washington Cities on your behalf. Um, and I think you all have uh, seen and reviewed their legislative agenda as well, but there's an item on, you know, this line on here that directs us to continue our work with them. Um, in addition to the items on your legislative agenda, and just a, a reminder that there are issues that come up um, throughout the legislative session where we're playing defense or the city has a unique interest in them. So you'll be hearing from us on far more issues than those that are simply identified in this priority list. Um, an example of one of those that has come up most recently is that um, there is a legislative discussion around doing a pilot project uh, around water mitigation solutions. And uh, Chelsea and Mark Dorsey have been looking at how to get the city positioned to take advantage of some of the pilot project options that might be available under that. Um, so we're always looking for opportunities to advance your interests um, beyond those that are in your legislative priorities. Um, and I think with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Brianna? Brianna? I think you covered it all. Or concerns, since you all have this <coughs> legislative agenda before you this evening. Thank you for coming this evening. Of course, my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we're on to our business items. And the first is adoption of a resolution adopting our 2018 uh, legislative agenda. And we just heard a presentation from uh, Brianna. And, uh, Mr. Donnell? Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution thereby approving the 2018 legislative agenda. Second. Second by Mr. Chang. Further discussion of the legislative agenda? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the item is approved. Thank you. So we now we are on to item B, which is adoption of an ordinance adopting a new chapter of the Port Orchard Municipal Code 3.90 donation acceptance. Ms. Cates. Thank you, Your Honor. Council members, uh, as you know, upon the uh, City of Port Orchard's reclassification to a non-charter code city, I undertook a review of the Port Orchard Municipal Code to determine if revisions or additions were necessary. As part of that review, I worked with the City Clerk's Office um, that uh, proposed a number of additions, and what is before you tonight is one of those additions, the, uh, the addition of Chapter 3.90, donation acceptance. Um, this is uh, 
intended to be used to clarify for uh, citizens what the city's process for accepting donations um, is. And so uh, that, that was set forth and, and reviewed recently by the finance department to make sure we had that all correct. Um, so staff recommends adoption of the ordinance uh, adopting a new chapter of the Port Orchard Municipal Code, chapter 3.90, donation acceptance as presented. Mr. Dieter. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt an ordinance adopting a new chapter of the Port Orchard Municipal Code, 3.90, donation acceptance as presented. Second. Motion and a second by Mr. Donlan. Any questions or comments on this piece of code? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We are on to item C, adoption of a resolution confirming mayoral appointments uh, to boards and commissions. I guess this one's me. Right. So annually, the clerk's office uh, reviews the expiring terms of, or, or vacancies of members of various boards and commission. The mayor has appointed the following persons to the boards and commission. Planning commission, reappointment of Trish Tierney for a four-year term expiring December 31st, 2021. The appointment of David Bernstein to fill an unexpired term expiring December 31st, 2019. The Civil Service Commission appointment of Jerry Childs for a six-year term expiring December 31st, 2023. Design Review Board appointment of Ken Cambich for a three-year term expiring December 31st, 2020. The appointment of Dave Jeffcoat to fill an unexpired term expiring December 31st, 2019. The Building Bo Board of Appeals uh, reappointment of Sean Hoynes for a five-year term expiring December 31st, 2022. The Animal Control Board reappointments of Dr. Nancy Isabel and Lorraine Olson for three-year terms expiring December 31st, 2020. I recommend <coughs> adoption of res resolution confirming these appointments. Yes, Ms. Lucarelli. I move to adopt a resolution confirming the mayor's appointments to the boards and commissions as set forth in the resolution okay. presented. Second. A motion and a second. And just briefly to address Ms. Harmon's concerns. So occasionally I have a mid-year appointment and typically this is an annual process as the, because these are mature, as you can see, all December 31st. And typically I have folks, I haven't had a need to, to, to solicit uh, anyone to, to want that wants to serve on these. I've had people throughout the year say, hey, I'd like to get more involved. And, you know, I said, well, I've, you know, I've got this opportunity or that opportunity. And is, so I can speak to, I mean, the reappointments, I think, speak for themselves. <coughs> but as far as the appointments I've made that are new folks, um, the planning commission, uh, David Bernstein is a local podiatrist. He lives out on Geiger uh, Street out off of Sedgwick and uh, he has served previously on the design review board and he's participated in our uh, new code development and in that process he said hey I'd like to do something more and I said great I've got to. so Mr. Drury of uh, who is was on our planning commission for gosh 14 years or so is uh, now become our new judge and that would be a conflict of interest so he stepped down and Mr. Bernstein is filling his seat. Um, the Civil Service Commission, um, the person that uh, w held that seat moved out of the area and uh, Mr. Childs was a former council member and uh, his career was as a firefighter and I felt he was a great choice uh, to serve on the Civil Service Commission. Um, the Design Review Board, I had uh, someone step off of it and Dr. Bernstein left so that created two openings. So Dave Jeffcoat of Kitsap Bank, who lives downtown, um, is fulfilling the unexpired turn. And Ken Cambich, who's a local attorney, works at the Shires firm and has been a McCormick resident, what, 10 years or so, um, uh, has asked to uh, do something more. And uh, so I've uh, slotted, slotted him into that design review board position. So those, that's kind of the thought process of how I came to those recommendations and uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions for me, Mr. Chang? 
Can you tell me if all the planning commissioners are currently residents of the city? Every one of them are currently a resident of the city, yes. And I know there is an, a provision in our code that one of the seven members could be someone outside the city, but currently we have none. So, other questions? All right, we'll be voting on the adoption of a resolution confirming the mayoral appointments to boards and commission. <coughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And we are to our last business item, approval of the November 28, 28, 2017 council meeting minutes. Be somebody that was gone. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Okay, sure, you're right. I haven't gotten it to it yet. So is there a motion? I would move that we approve the uh, council, min council minutes um, as revised um, Okay. This evening, we had a revised uh, revision page, yeah. when we got, and I agree with those revisions. I will second that motion. A motion and a second to approve the council meeting minutes of November 28th. Any further discussion on those minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And one abstention. Carries. We are to report of council committees. Um, Mr. Clausen, Finance Committee. So we have a meeting scheduled for December 19th at 5 p.m. here at City Hall. Okay. Economic Development and Tourism. Uh, yes, we will be meeting January 8th, 9 a.m. here in Council Chambers. All right. Uh, utilities. I think that meeting got canceled, didn't it? Yes, our meeting for next week did get canceled. <coughs> I suspect we will uh, reconvene January 15th here at City Hall, 9.30 a.m. Okay. I will confirm that date. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sewer Advisory Committee, it looks like it meets January 17th? It does. Okay, and land use met this morning. Mr. I'll talk a little bit about that. So we had four agenda items. The first one was a uh, discussion of a request by Kitsap Building uh, Association to um, put together a advisory group. And what we've decided to do is table that until the new year when we have new <coughs> committee appointments made. We also talked about a, uh, an area-wide rezone for Crawford Road off of Bethel. This is an area that's uh, currently depressed in its um, building state and is hamstrung by its current commercial designation. And the Land Use Committee felt that it would be more appropriate if that property were zoned to residential 4.5. Um, we, we will likely see that move forward as a work study item and a rezone for the comprehensive plan. We also talked about some housekeeping amendments. Uh, these are the kinds of um, housekeeping items that you find once you uh, adopt a whole bunch of code and then you quickly find out that there are things that need to be corrected and cross-references and things that were dropped. And so this is just a rather routine uh, effort by staff. And then we also talked about uh, strengthening the accessory, accessory dwelling unit code that the city has. Uh, so that includes both uh, attached and detached additional dwelling units that people um, enjoy in, in many different jurisdictions. And so we're, we're looking at strengthening that code and making that uh, more useful for our citizens. And that's all that we talked about. And I don't know when our next meeting is yet. We'll uh, get that notice. I'm we, willing to bet that the next, we'll have committee assignments before yeah, okay. then. Sometime in January. In January, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, did you guys talk about the apartments on Phillips that we read about in the paper? No, that's not in the city. 270 units? Okay. It's in our UGA. It's, yeah, we, we did not talk city. about that. Uh, it seems like an urban level type development, not we, in the city. I no. believe that we will have concerns about the uh, traffic impacts. There will be discussion between the county and the city on that project. Okay. There is okay. no doubt. Good. Yes, so um, lodging tax? Nothing to report. Okay, and there's probably nothing on Chimes and Life. <laughs> Good job. Oh, thank you very much. It was such a lovely evening, and in spite of the rain, um, I think it was uh, another very successful event, and you know, special thanks to staff, did a fabulous job. Public Works, amazing, absolutely amazing. 
um, and of course marching band and could go on and on and I actually will um, sometime probably in January we'll have just a, a little bit of time for a presentation for thanks and um, thank you all for coming it was really very special our next meeting Monday this next Monday on the 18th at 3 30 we'll be working to um, choose some decorations for next year okay and just a reminder there Next week's meeting is not a work study. It'll be a regular business Open meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we won't, it'll be our last meeting of the year, planned for the year, if something catastrophic happens. Um, and uh, so our next work study won't be till January 16th. Um, on to the mayor's report. Um, I, uh, the merchants have approached me. Um, they had tr their, their flowers that they funded this last year. Um, didn't, for a number of reasons, didn't qualify for LTAC funding as they had planned. And so they have approached me about uh, the city contributing funds to their flowers, and I've talked to the city attorney about that, and it's problematic as we, you know, last, as we went through our budget process a year ago, um, Helpline wanted us to make, you know, a donation to help cover their you know, sewer and water bill, and we just felt it was a, not a good precedence to set, and, and I think this could fall in that, that same area. Also, the, the, I, mean, I think the only, the re only real option would be for us, if the council wanted to do this, would be for us to t take over the flowers, and, and then it would be a, that's, that's what other, like Bremerton has its own greenhouse, grows its own baskets. Um, you know, I'm not sure that we're, you know, in the market you can do for it. <laughs> in yeah. your backyard. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you know, actually, you have the solar panels. You're the one with the solar panels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, I'm, step up. I'm, I'm just, I'm just the messenger here, sharing that there is a request from the merchants, and you may hear from the merchants that that uh, you know they're struggling to afford the cost of their flowers. How much is that? I want to say about five thousand, about twenty five hundred for the baskets and about twenty five hundred for the pots in front. And we do help with the watering. the watering. The the the, the next, the, there's an irrigation system. We help with the fertilization oh, yeah, of the baskets. Right. So, Mr. Clausen. Yeah, that you know, as you sit here and think about it, it's not really their flowers. It's our flowers. Um, it's ours as mm -hmm. the communities, or ours as a city, if you want. It's our downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and I say R as the <coughs> community, not ours as the council by any means. So I personally don't see, I mean, obviously there's budget impacts uh, coming up with 5,000 bucks, but I, I guess I'm not quite sure how it could be construed as uh, improper expenditures. It may not qualify for LTAC. I, I think I, if, if, we, if we gave to it, I, I think what we would, what, in the research I did, we could take, potentially, we could take over the baskets at 2500 and we would need to do public procurement of those baskets. Right, no, I understand For us that. to give a thousand dollars to, towards the baskets, could, is probably problematic. Because I, I they wouldn't completely be completely understand that and completely agree that we could purchase the baskets and install them and we could have volunteers water them and mm -hmm. take care of them just like we would with our parks mm -hmm. so i don't know that other than i appreciate your your distinction of uh, you know it'd be the city that would need to do the purchase of them mm -hmm. as opposed to donating to Good an cause. effort well, I was going to say I've been involved with the flowers downtown for several years. Um, I have not been actively involved in the last couple of years. But some things have happened that have um, increased the cost um, to, the, to the Merchants Association. And I'm not opposed to the city taking that over, but we would do it in my opinion, um, we would have to do it through our procurement so that dollar amount may go up or down um, and we may <clears throat> choose different flowers I mean would we want them and there's a lot of different questions that would need to be answered I'm not opposed at all if, if we have the money or had some idea of what it would cost I don't think that we could use their number 
um, and use it as necessarily a ballpark number. I think that it may be different than that. Well, I would even think that we could reimburse them uh, with documented receipts. I mean, we just can't give them a number out of the air, but if they came forward with, here's a receipt from the nursery for these things, that we could reimburse them for that. I, I don't believe so from a procurement standpoint. The other, just. I would be surprised if we couldn't. I've got the attorney. The other we would have to enter into uh, an agreement of understanding, uh, MOU basically, that outlined why and how and how come. The other thing that, because um, I've had conversations with some of the merchants regarding this and you haven't had a, a position on it really except as a council person, I want to be very cautious that if we do this for the historic downtown area, if the Mile Hill area asked for flowers, Hi. Or some place on Bethel asked for flowers. We would need to be prepared to offer this same level of support throughout the city. Agreed. So I didn't mean to get into, and Mr. Dorsey's probably kicking himself for not being here tonight. Because <laughs> That's why I brought it up because fight. he's not here and we can talk about it. So, <laughs> so I just brought. I, I I got the request. I'm just sharing, and I think there's. It, it isn't. We aren't ready to go out and. No, Nobody's ready to go out and buy, 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 buy baskets, but they it was a um, a shot to their coffers that they hadn't anticipated, and they're they're just looking, forecasting out and saying, you know, we're going to have a real problem coming up with all of that. And I think if we're going to do something, it's probably taking over a piece of it and and, and just public works doing it. I, I think. And just, which was I also it's my understanding from years past that those baskets have already been ordered. They're typically ordered November, December. So it okay. may be a mute point for 18. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Chang, do you have the last comment? I was just wondering if we know how Bremerton handles their baskets downtown. Yeah, I, what I spoke to is Parks they have Rex. a green, they have a dedicated employee okay. and a, their own greenhouse and they grow them. Um, so yeah, that I was. Yeah, department that yeah. does all of it, growing them as well as maintaining them. I would also invite council members to go down to Montesano. They have absolutely beautiful baskets, and they have a greenhouse in their public works department um, grow their baskets. So moving on to my next item, uh, we continue to work on the water sewer agreement for McCormick Woods. It is planned at, at this point, and we still have a lot of work to do, that on January 9th we will have that on the agenda with a draft copy of it. And, and Jeff Terraday, who's our land use attorney, normally is the city attorney in which city on Tuesdays? Edmonds? City of Edmonds, yes. Edmonds. So Sharon's going to go to Edmonds, and Jeff's going to come here and uh, uh, so that we can, you know, since Jeff's the one working on this document, and, and uh, so we hope to have a robust uh, conversation about that agreement. Um, Noah's doing a lot of work uh, related to, and just, just to give you a, a taste of what one of the challenges right now is, is that I got a refresher, you know, for those of us that have been on the council a number of years, when we did our, our, uh, our capital improvement plan, and, and as it relates to the connection fees, it's not financially, it was, we made a policy decision to not make it financially constrained. And so, uh, because we felt that that connection fee would be too large, and at that time, we were still, you know, in a still coming out of an economic downturn. Um, we this agreement, you know, we will probably need to address those connection connection fees, which doesn't affect the current ratepayers. It's the connection fees for new connections, probably citywide. To take a look at that again. So, so we're Noah's doing a lot of analysis, current obligations that we have and projects, and we've got a lot of them in the budget from the treatment system at nine, and uh, other capital projects, and making sure that we have sufficient cash flows to to meet all those obligations before we enter into any sort of agreement. So, more to come on that. Um, AWC Action Days is coming up quickly. It's in January. The, it's a Wednesday and a Thursday, the 24th and 25th. Council Member Ashby is signed up for both days. I'm going to sign up for for the AWC event on the Wednesday, 
and then there's a chance the Brianna, Brandon and Chelsea will actually uh, take us to do our lobbying efforts on that Thursday. So if there's anybody else, it's important if you want to go to the AWC event uh, and the, the functions that are related to that to sign up, that I think it would be more beneficial on the Wednesday of that. There aren't as many options as far as the AWC, the needs to sign up for the AWC unless you choose to for the <coughs> Thursday, but there is an opportunity to go down on Thursday and Brianna, or excuse me, uh, Brandy would need to know that pretty quick. Just a comment on that. I, I ran it into Chelsea here last week and we were talking about this very event and I think it might be a good policy for us to try to divide and conquer. That's a really, really busy week. There's tons and tons of people there and it's hard to really get FaceTime and, and be effective with our dialogues. And so, you know, I think it's fantastic that we're gonna have representation there, but if we, it was almost recommended to me that we look at times outside of that week mm -hmm. where we can go down where things are a little bit more quiet and I think we can have much more of an impact for our city. And so I would encourage all of us to maybe look at our schedules and see how we could spread out you know, if we're able to go down there and spend some time with our, you know, with our delegation, that we do it on times where we maybe have more of an opportunity to sit down and be, you know, face to face with them versus such a really, really busy That's time. Busy time yeah. Yeah. Which is why I haven't signed up for that week. Okay, no problem. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware that it's out, the opportunities there. Uh, the Salmonberry sinkhole, the roads opened. Oh, there, uh, the contract we were able to to uh, get the property owner to take action and they've cut a trench across their property that has allowed the water to drain out of the sinkhole. So we've at least got, got some Jersey barrier on the one edge because there's about 20 feet of water just off the shoulder, but at least the road isn't underwater. And, and mm. uh, so uh, the road is open. And lastly, um, I wasn't in town last week because I had the opportunity to participate as uh, a guest of Captain Lennox. Of the, he is the uh, commander of the Nimitz, and so I would participate in the Tiger Cruise coming up from San Diego, and uh, it's a fabulous experience. Um, the public, there was a lot of, inter, you know, the, the greatest, I think, interaction I had was all those sailors, and I was surprised how many of them live in our community, right here in Port Orchard, and... Uh, just, you know, what they do, it gives just great appreciation of what they do and uh, conditions they live and work in. And uh, so it was, uh, it was a fabulous experience. So I'm, I'm really glad I did it. Um, and that, and coming in to, gosh, Puget Sound uh, on the deck of the carrier was just cool. amazing. With the sun shining. Oh, it was, I know. It was, I was, I, I was <laughs> yeah. December to not have rain and that sunshine was fabulous. So uh, we are, uh, where are we at? Department heads, Mr. Bond. Yeah, just two quick announcements. Um, first of all, the small cell project that, uh, the, uh, that Lighthouse had initiated with one of their partners, um, I'm expecting to see something in the next week. And so we should be taking that up most likely at land use after the first of the year. Um, the other item, and we talked about this briefly this morning at Land Use Committee, but the we talked about the Crawford Road Comp Plan amendments, but the deadline for comprehensive plan amendments to be filed is January 31st. And so if any of you individually have ideas for something that you want to see changed or policies that could be strengthened, um, please uh, contact my office, either Carrie or myself, and we'd be happy to um, uh, sort of flesh out some ideas and bring them forward for consideration either at the Land Use Committee or likely at the work study meeting in January. Okay. That's all. Wonderful. Ms. Cates, you have anything? I have nothing this evening. <coughs> Randy? Whoa. Nothing? All right. So we to our, uh, let's see, citizen comments. Jerry? I'm the old dog still hanging on to the bone. I still, I understand the way you explained the process, Mr. Mayor, but we have over 13,000 people in our community, and I know there are very few people that come to city council and give input and don't seem to care, but still, it should be announced for the public, so if there's somebody that has a desire, they could at least apply, and then it would be your choice to pick them. And I still think that for transparency, you need to at least offer the opportunity to be part of our local government. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is 
on the flowers. I don't know how many times is going to other communities that people in the car comment on how beautiful the flower baskets are in other communities. On 16 going into Shelton, which is a area, I don't know who's doing their flowers, but when you drop down the hill past the yacht club and you start looking at those beautiful baskets, it just um, hits you that it's a community that cares about themselves. So if there's some way that you can come up with a plan to help the, to bring the tourists in, that seems to me that that's a tourist activity. And it does draw people in when it looks like the community cares and tries to help the community, you know, to look good. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Others? Mr. Rosecutt. Up there for okay, sorry. There you go. Uh, two, er, two thank yous. One is for clearing up Lake Salmonberry. Uh, we travel uh, that way with buses to pick up school kids, so that was very appreciated. Uh, second one is please thank Public Works and the Police Department for the Jingle Bell Run. Uh, excellent support that they provided, which went into chimes and lights, but it was all part of the same day. But they did a great job and it really helped out. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Number of young men. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Michael, and I just decided to come to the city hall meeting today. I saw it on the city's website. That's kind of how I found out what the day and the time was. I believe it says it was the second and fourth Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Yes. I had nothing to say today, so I didn't come up and say anything. But <laughs> if something does come up, it's a nice uh, arena to do it in. Uh, that's all. Thank, right. you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Got a number of young men over there on the, to the right. Do you have any comments or concerns you'd like to share with us this evening? No? All right. Thanks for coming tonight. Yes. All right. So we, we will be, uh, Mr. Clausen? Yeah, I just wanted to remind folks that the holiday light tour is uh, tomorrow evening at 530. Uh, we have, I believe, Brandy 5 planning to go. So we need to know how many so that we know what size vehicle. So if anybody's interested, let Brandy know first thing so we can get the appropriate size vehicle. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we will now be going into a roughly 10-minute executive session related to a personal matter, uh, related to RCW 40.30.101011G. And after that executive session, I will come out and adjourn the meeting. And then we will then proceed to a 15-minute collective bargaining uh, session uh, relate, uh, pursuant to RCW 40.30.1404. And uh, we will take no action after that, uh, <coughs> after that meeting. So uh, we'll be heading into an executive session. <laughs>